Hello and welcome to Money 101 with Jane Dutton. Bitcoin, blockchains, non-fungible tokens and now the metaverse. Hosted by avatars and powered by our desire for entertainment and making money. So how do we navigate and benefit from this relatively new financial frontier? I think that for the crypto community, that was, these are the questions that we need to hear. Right, it's uh, usability is clearly still a challenge. Mm. I think it's never been better, but it's still a challenge. So yeah, there's lots of places to go in South Africa. I mean, we got Luno, we got Valor. And those are probably the two big crypto exchanges. I mean, Luno, everyone knows Valor. Um, love the team at Valor. You can do more things on Valor, in my opinion. Luno is predominantly Bitcoin and Ethereum and a, and a couple of others. Even the stable coins like USD is on there. Um, and these are places where you can take your bank account and transfer a bit of money into the the exchange and you know, sign up with the exchange. They do the KYC in South Africa, which is great. ID book, proof of residence, picture. Mm -hmm. They do all of that stuff. Go to Luno or go to Valor, onboard yourself. Take 200 bucks, buy 50 rands with the Bitcoin. You don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. It's like 40 plus thousand dollars right now, yeah. right? And when I got involved, it was, I think it was a hundred and something dollars. You know, that's 40 something thousand dollars. Just buy, buy a couple of Satoshis, buy 200 bucks, buy 50 rand, give it to your kids. Watch them do it. Mm. Now transfer your money from your bank account into your Luna wallet or into your Valor wallet. And once it's there, you have the capability to instantaneously buy any one of those currencies and mess around with it and play with it and see how you can short it, you can long it, you can put, you can put puts up, you can do what you need to do from a trading perspective. Now the question is, where can you go to get reputable advice? Look, they are, there's, there's the exchanges themselves, um, but it's a, it's a very noisy world. You know, you can get lost in the Twitter verse of, of NFTs, the Twitter verse of crypto. I generally go to where the developers are. I don't like the, um, the, the, the kind of the journalists and those folks in it. I go to the actual folks like Jimmy Song. I mean, he's one of the most credible Bitcoin developer guys out there. He teaches people how to develop on Bitcoin and on the blockchain. And uh, he's incredible. So I listen to him very carefully. But there's Coinbase, there's large organizations out there that allow you to monitor the currency um, and, and just watch it closely. You know, how does it perform against inflation? How does it perform against general metrics out there in terms of bad news, Russia invading Ukraine? How does it affect Bitcoin? It's still very young. People also look at that price point of 40 something thousand dollars and go, whoa, it's expensive. I mean, I got into Ethereum about three years ago. I think it was at its one of its peaks, one of right. its highs. And then I watched it go crashing down. It's incredibly stressful, isn't it? What, what impacts... <laughs> the cryptocurrency i mean elon musk says something and bitcoin tumbles yeah. why is it still so fragile i think it's the amount of players in it i still think we've got what they call whales that can move money which moves the price i mean there's a lot of volatility in it but you cannot measure it in months you know when i got into bitcoin i'm i'm a hodler so i i hold on for dear life right <laughs> so i'm one of the hodlers and my advice is not to look at it week by week by week Believe me, I don't. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> it, it'll, it'll kill you. Yeah. Okay, NFTs. It's another yeah. one of those fascinating yeah. elements that we've seen of late. I mean, if you look at the projections for NFTs in the third quarter of 2021, trading volume rose by 704%. That's 10.67 billion. And Morgan Stanley predicts that by 2030, it's going to be worth 240 billion. I still think that's a conservative estimate. I think it's going to be much bigger. Yeah, much bigger. Much. So what is it? I mean, it's, it's a mm. little part of a bigger <laughs> picture. Explain. NFTs is a community. NFTs is a movement. NFTs, in my opinion, and maybe this is a unique opinion, NFTs is a place where Gen Zs are having their hoodstock. Okay, but how do, you, mm. how do you buy it? So I go, yeah. there's a painting. Yes. This person is selling NFTs to right. fund his or her painting. Right. How do I buy it? So there's NFT marketplaces. So the one that's very famous now and it's getting more and more famous is something like OpenSea. So you go to OpenSea.io and if you're an artist, uh, you can learn how to take your work and publish it digitally in there. So either it's a painting or a piece of digital artwork or it's a song. Um, I've actually helped the band. I'm not going to say what the band is, but last year they ran out of money. Here's an example. Band ran out of money. Um, they had to put up a Facebook post and said lockdowns have killed us. You know, we, we're going to have to split up. We're now doing menial labor jobs because we need to keep the lights on. We have families and they hate the government, etc. And they put up a social media. It was a Facebook post. I, there was like six, seven hundred comments underneath it. And then I just commented on there saying, have you heard of NFTs? Mm. If not, just ping me. And the band member pinged me because they had Googled my name. And they said, this sounds like you're a credible tech guy. Yes, let's talk about it. And we spoke about it. Here's an example. They took three songs 
and made them NFTs. So they published them up into an NFT marketplace, right? So you that, hand your song over to the marketplace. Yeah, so the and, market, and you put it up do for the sale. Clever stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you say, this is what I think it's worth. And you either get a bartering mechanism kicking in or you put a price on there. Um, then they put some album cover artwork that they'd never released before with a song that went along with it. That was their second NFT, a combination of the two. And they did a third one. The first NFT sold for one million rand. They put wow. a price point up there and they thought, no, but they only have 40 something thousand fans. But one of those 40,000 fans was willing to spend a million rand on those three never released songs before. The Very second well. person was willing to spend, I think it, there was about 200,000 rand or so, just below 200,000 for the, the album artwork and that single song. They made, out of their two NFTs, what they would have made a year and a half of playing in person. Goodness, I must try and think of one of my talents and <laughs> <laughs> pop it up there. Yeah, so I mean, if you, if, you, if you, this is a place where you can go get discovered, where mm-hmm. the things that you truly believe is of value will be valued. But it is a crazy world. It is a anarchic, it's the wild west, the NFT mm. world. Why? Because platforms that do allow you to create NFTs or to publish your NFTs and to trade your NFTs, things like gas fees, which is the transaction fees for settling. So you, you, you either use Solana currency to settle or whatever the, 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 the token you use to settle to pay for that. Um, it's incredible, the, mm. the movement. And I mean, an artist can publish an NFT, a piece of work, and they can program that NFT to always pay them in future, if it's ever traded by anyone, they don't have to care, always 2.5%. So 2.5% of the trade in perpetuity comes back into their wallet. That's incredible power, programmable yeah. money. Dan won't get into this. He yeah. said he's been 25 years on pension. So, and he said he's a bit confused. He said, as governments print money with their yeah. own guarantee that it has solid backing, previously it was gold, but today while Bitcoin has what as backing, or is there some kind of reserve somewhere? I don't know, Stan, if you're on pension, in 20, 30 years time, will that pension money that you have considering the inflationary markers that are present in the market today due to all the, the, the printing of dollars that's happened by central reserves over the last 24 months, look at that money. You know, I think that money will halve in value every five years in terms of what it's capable of buying for your children one the day you're gone. My opinion, Stan, is the safest place to put your money is, is, is Bitcoin. Why? Um, it's just my opinion. Don't do it, Stan, but it's my opinion, right? I'm exposed to Bitcoin heavily. I have more than 40 something percent of my net asset value in Bitcoin. So I'm, I'm a true believer in it. But I believe it because of the math. It's math. It's not a human being. It's not a fiction. It's not a joint delusion that we all believe. Because that's what money is today. Because if you truly lift the lid on money today, it has no, its value is, is our belief that there's government backing to it. There's the rule of law and uh, you know, just the belief that, that it will always be the thing that we move around and we can buy. And put. It's a, it's a, but it's a lie. It's a joint fiction that we all believe. Bitcoin is scarce. It is a digital gold. That's my opinion. You know? All right. So there are companies like Walmart mm-hmm. who want their own currency, NFTs. They're moving into the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Why would companies move into the metaverse? I mean, it's still relatively unexplored territory, right. but there are basically different worlds out there, aren't there? Digital worlds. Yeah. So you hear this, and, and uh, this is the noise. You need to look for that signal amongst the noise, right? You're hearing corporates coming up saying, okay, well, we're going to launch our own digital currency. And then within our domain, this is how you will move tokens within that domain. That's interesting. Mm. Um, but there, I worry about centralization. Yeah, again, we, you know, decentralization is the power of... Mm. Bitcoin, it truly, truly is. So if you have Walmart creating its own blockchain with its own tokens where people can trade, well, I don't know what Walmart's going to do relative to the value of that token. I don't know what the business decisions, that's very centralized. I wouldn't trust that. I wouldn't buy that token. I wouldn't invest in that token because that's a centralized token. Um, Metaverse for me is, you know, when I first heard it, I was skeptical. Mm. I thought, you know, this is just Mark Zuckerberg getting in here because these companies being Trying to nailed say face, facebook yeah, it's a head fake the mm. biggest head fake ever yeah. is, is the metaverse right so stop thinking about false news and fake news and me being the cause mm. of people dying and yeah. in you know different parts of the world and ethiopia etc just forget that forget everything here's the metaverse mm. i thought it was that but when i took a look at metaverse within the context of nfts where people again the Hoodstock moment is happening. I think that we've told so many Gen Zs. I mean, look at Gen Zs for this for, for right now. 
they're probably the most disenfranchised generation that we've ever had. Number one. Number two is they, they know that their world is under threat all the time, climate change. Right? They've been locked down for the last two years and all they've seen is death. Um, their, their parents or people very close to them still suffer from the reper repercussions of 2008 and the financial crisis, which in my argument is why crypto actually emerged. Um, so this generation is, is, is a, this is the generation whose lives are completely rendered in social media containers. A Gen Z person today has their baby pictures all the way through to their 18th, 19th, 20th birthday inside of a social media container, which they have no control over, that is being mined by an, a disparate set of artificial intelligences. Mm. And so privacy is a myth for them. They live in this world where the physical world is not a good world for them. It holds no promise for them. Leaders that are, I mean, look at the world. The world's never been in a worse state from a leadership perspective. The, the World War II structures that we put in place, NATO through to treaties, um, the UN Security Councils, all these things are under threat. I mean, Trump came along and pretty much trampled on all of that, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if, you t if you're a Gen Z, look at the last 24 to 36 months of your life. Why would you not find solace in a digital world more so than you would in a physical world? Coming back to my point, the metaverse, I think, will truly become a reality. Why? Because we'll have Kanye West in there owning a house next to Snoop Dogg. And within a certain proximity, your digital home will be to theirs. And therefore, you'll earn X amount of tokens. And people will want to wear the clothes that you're wearing in that neighborhood. That can I mean, totally look, happen. Sorry, those property prices are shooting through yeah. the roof. I mean, there's a property boom. Boom. In, NFT, in, 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 in the metaverse, yeah. people are buying and developing yeah. homes and letting them out. And the so, vision around NFTs is that we are creating assets that will become tradable assets within a metaverse. So, you know, today, um, you know, let's call it Web2. Um, you access a game and you're in the game and your sword's incredibly powerful in that game. What if that sword was an NFT and that sword was transversal, transversal in terms of its usage within a metaverse, multiple and games, etc. That's That's an interesting thing. And Nike has already done that. Yeah. And I was reading about the incredible trades that happen Prada, for example, mm -hmm. sold a bag that doesn't exist, yep. and then somebody sold that bag on, and it's worth more than it is in yep. reality. <laughs> so a lot of this stuff is noise. A lot of this stuff will go away. A lot of this stuff is absolutely crazy. Should companies be gearing up for entering okay. the metaverse? I mean, it'll open up new markets for them. It'll create jobs because you've mm -hmm. got to get people in there to, to power it up. Yep. What should they be thinking? Well, you've got to for your brand. Where's your brand going to live? Your brand has to have a digital roadmap. And if that digital roadmap is not tied in to the ether, to a metaverse story around it, you're falling behind. Um, it depends, though. You know, what, where are you targeting your brand at? So if it's a certain LSM or a certain demographic or a certain um, age group, etc., you've really got to understand your strategy more so. You know, to retain people that understand this knowledge mm -hmm. is a challenge for leadership out there. How do you write the job spec for them? How do you incentivize them? How do you pay them? This Let's is just difficult. talk a little bit about what it looks like. I mean, we've got Facebook, mm -hmm. we've got Microsoft, all doing their own yep. metaverses. Mm -hmm. So they will populate it with whatever they think is going to work and mm -hmm. sell. There's an entertainment value in there. Right. Uh, there is an education value in there. Mm -hmm. What else is it that I think you've got to look provide? at it. It's, it's kind of like social media. Uh, I remember when Google got into social media, they kind of kind of tripped and fell because the core of who they were was search. You know, that's not who they were. Um, you know, Microsoft kind of got into social media and they tripped and they fell too. I mean, we saw some big players, but Facebook was really, really focused on social media and they did really well. Uh, it's going to depend. I think Microsoft's core value proposition for Metaverse will be a, an enterprise value proposition. It will be a place where you can render your business and do situational analysis. It will be a place where you can go into a hospital and do a digital render with multiple doctors worldwide and consider a particular problem in the healthcare space. I think they could provide a secure derivative of the metaverse. So a mixture of augmented reality with virtual reality with the metaverse, with personalities inside of that, where techniques get developed and those techniques perhaps become intellectual property that gets protected like an NFT. Mm -hmm. um, we could see uh, corporations like Microsoft utilizing NFTs as identity versus the way you log into a service today, you'd utilize your NFT as a transversal mechanism that has value in of itself to authenticate into various areas. 
from an enterprise perspective. You could be known from a CV, a verification of skills perspective. I think things like that Microsoft could deliver. Mm. I think Facebook is more the social graph that they're trying to inject, how to meet loved ones, how to meet your partner, how to you know, socially engage. That's their mindset. Now, will there be an integration of multi-metaverses? Will we find the universe or the galaxy? And who will define that galaxy? That's not clear right now. We don't know that. It'll be interesting to see, but I think it's, it's 1999. And you're asking me, you know, who's the Amazon and who's the Facebooks? I can't tell you that yet, but I can tell you that the shift is, is, is happening. And, and it's quite there's substantial. talk of the avatar economy. So, for example, mm. if I'm a big celebrity, I could be sleeping and my avatar twin can yeah. be doing some work. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, that's, that's really leading edge, right, in terms of, of how you're thinking about that. But we're already seeing celebrities getting in there mm. and doing some things. I mean, Kanye West is doing some really cool things, maybe releasing a song as an NFT where... Um, as you're recording it, you know, you, you, you're putting it up as value. When it gets traded, the people that listen, your fans, derive value, not just from buying it, but buying a piece of it. That's a, like going into Discord and, and being part of its development and its augmentation and adding to the song and mixing it and remixing it and playing it in this way in different circumstances. This is an incredible world for artists. Anyone that can generate human expression in that way the tool sets at your disposal right now is astonishing. What it will result in, in terms of organization that will exploit it or that will leverage it and create a business model around it, it's interesting. We've got you know big corporations like Microsoft and Facebook and Apple, and then on this side, we've got the upstarts like OpenSea and those folks with the NFT marketplaces. It's the Wild West. It's fun to watch, though. Mm. To truly understand where this is going, don't look at the technology and measure it in weeks or months. Bitcoin... This world, you need to measure in you know, 12 month segments. And if you start thinking about it in multi-year segments and you'll start looking at the trajectory and you'll see it's very, very different. Mm -hmm. It's the most exciting thing that I've ever seen in my technological experience. Um, I think it's the greatest gift that has ever been given to mankind. It's Satoshi's white paper and the first derivative of Bitcoin. That was, it's just, it's insurmountably incredible. Thank you very much, Stafford Marcy. And we shall see you next time. If you've got any questions and you want to send anything to us, please get hold of me, jane at biznews.com.